Okay, it's starting, I think. Ooh. <laughs> oh! There it is. Now you hear it? Yep. That's my little nod to PS1. That's hilarious. Retro disc? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Be warned that this experience is not intended for anyone suffering from heart conditions or other health-related risks that may be triggered by feelings of terror. <sighs> oh boy. And my mouse is on the wrong computer. I love this. This is a very Stranger Things-esque yep. vibe. Yep. I, I was going for something between Stranger Things, um, the uh, the thing, which is one of my favorite horror movies, Amazing. and Insidious. Oh, I watched okay. all the introductions to those and just kind of studied them. Nice. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Patches, and welcome to Nemesis. I said it right. Yeah, it's not Nemesis. Yep. Nemesis. Nemesis. And I am here with the creator himself, Matt. Reeves, whose Hello. uncle is Keanu Reeves, guys. Can you believe that? <laughs> um, some of you guys know I do have a podcast, Play More Games, and typically I would play a game and then interview the person, but I wanted to kind of switch it up this time and combine both, if that was possible. So he is going to help me, I guess, and guide me through this. Now, it is an alpha, right? Yes. It's correct. Okay, cool. I'm really nervous, and we were kind of talking a little bit before this. I, I'm actually really not scared of clowns, but like yourself you will be we're trying to change that <laughs> oh will be okay <laughs> oh my god dude hmm. you're like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what was your main intent of this game were you trying to eventually just potentially scare yourself <laughs> or like hey uh, i want to be scared of clowns or i what mean was, what were you trying to do Originally, in high school, I wanted to make the scariest game ever made. That was kind of just just something I, I, I love horror, I love scary games, and I decided, you know, I had this idea for a game. And at the time I was in high school, I didn't have the skill set to actually do it. I just had kind of the ideas. Um, and so I thought, you know what? Someday I'll I'll come back, and when I've learned everything I need to, I'll make the scariest game. And so this is just me trying to do that <laughs> i gotta say it's gotten some pretty good reaction so far are... yeah i mean we were just talking about markiplier just played it um oh sorry i keep connecting over to my other monitor and i'm trying not to do that but markiplier just played it and that got you some well-deserved attention this is already oh my this goodness. looks and what did you make this on unreal engine really is that surprising? Right. I just, it looks better than Unreal. Like there's wow. the textures. I appreciate it. And like the sounds of the carpet. Yeah. Okay, so we just woke up in your room and it looks very realistic to my room with all the, the cans and change everywhere. <laughs> so what are some of your favorite horror games? I love interviewing people while playing horror games, by the way, so it really distracts me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so when I was 12 years old, uh, I beat the original Silent Hill, um, and I think mm. doing that so young probably warped my brain. <laughs> and I know, right. like right now, it's it's cool to be like really into Silent Hill and like, oh yeah, Silent Hills. But I mean, that was like my favorite game in fifth grade, and you know, I'm 31 now, so a long time ago when it came out, uh, I think that was probably around 99. Um, and that just, I don't know, that just awoke something in me. Um, are you you all right? You're making some. Well, I you know what's there. crazy is I wasn't even scared. I just happened to look down, and you've created like a full person. Like I see feet. Yep, those wow. are actually my feet. Well, pictures of them that I turned into textures. <laughs> wow, stupid question. How do I open the door? Uh, right now you can't. Um, I'm working on the I'm in this room. Well, there's there's more. You just gotta kind of click around. Um. <laughs> I'm working on the official demo, which will hopefully come out later this year, um, and you will be nice. able to open the door. But um, yeah, it's a lot of work for one guy. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you, you have a family and you're, you know, busy, of course. This, I'm, this isn't your job. You're not. No, doing no, this, this is I, I work at like a full time job, but I'm also working a full time job to pay the bills. So, uh, yeah, I'm very, very busy. Um, the dream is for this to be my full time job at some point. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, Markiplier playing my game has tripled my patrons, which wow. is just insane. <laughs> That's amazing. And I'm actually going to have to be starting my own podcast soon because my first goal on Patreon was uh, at $100 I would start a podcast. And I'm like $7 away. Oh, wow. Which, by the yeah, way, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for supporting me. Oh, my goodness. It means so much. Yeah, of course. Sorry, something happened right as you were saying that. I woke up and it looks like I am younger? No, same person? Oh, Jesus. Same person. <laughs> Fucking hey. Okay, I feel like I'm going to be cussing you out a lot of this. So just don't take that <laughs> oh, personally. I've had everything said to me while people played this game. And do you think Markiplier just found it on Itch.io? Yeah. Do you think that's what happened? Wow. Um, cause you can see, um, who buys your game by their email. And I saw that, that he bought it and, uh, it said he found it in the browse section. So I'm assuming he was just looking through and, and happened to see it. So did he contact you? I wish. No. Mark, if you see this, I would love to <laughs> chat. <laughs> Shit, yeah. If you see this, let me know. Hit me up. Yeah. I went, um, I did a beach cleanup for him. Uh, and his clothing brand oh, and wow. he was there and he was really sick poor guy oh man but he still came he didn't clean the beach with us but he still met with people and he was like i want to meet you all but don't get near me <laughs> yeah wow that's so cool yeah he's a really awesome guy it's really <laughs> effort and you know i i'm i'm sure Things that's keep laughing in my ear oh yeah yeah oh you heard it if you look around, you might see something. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that uh, it's probably a big reason why uh, Mark is as big as he is. Is just you can tell he's a genuine person. You know, it's not just someone who plays scary games and screams. No, he like really promotes indie gamers. I'm turning yes. off the mouse going to the other computer. No, he, I mean, that's awesome what he does, like, in general, but also promoting indie titles and playing, you know, three scary games. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was... That, oh, I know where you are. Yeah, that was such <laughs> a, a huge milestone for me, too, because when I decided to pursue game development, like, seriously, I kind of set out a plan for myself, and it was like, okay, make a demo get Markiplier to play it, and then do a Kickstarter. So, made the demo, now Markiplier has played it, so next in line is probably a Kickstarter at some yeah. point. I mean, I feel like you've hit the milestone, man. I feel like I would be like, well, I'm done now. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> this is so creepy. So, you, you were, I'm assuming you're a big fan of PT then. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was so mad when that got that it didn't get. Yeah. But I, you know, everyone was. Anyone who was interested in it got so angry, and you know, that's just the way things go. Money, money, money. Right. <sighs> but, um, you know, it's, it was really cool getting to play Visage. Um, yeah, have you played that one yet? I actually just bought it because I got all this set up. I was like, well, while I'm here playing stuff for the PC, I'm going to go ahead and buy that because mm -hmm. I've watched, I didn't, I haven't watched people play it. And from what I've seen, it's horrifying. Yeah. I would say that Visage is like the game PT could have been. And I think that was probably right. their, their plan. I'm sure PT. Yeah, which is how I found it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sure that uh, if they had made Silent Hills, uh, that it would have been a completely different game uh, from Visage, but it's still cool to play Visage because it it just you kind of wake up in this room in the same way and you walk through a door and you're in a big house. That's how I found it though, because people were like freaking out that PT didn't get made, so they were like, okay, what's gonna 
be remotely close to this. And yeah. that was one of the games that came up, but I remember following it from the Kickstarter. Okay, I'm in the room where there's like a little balloon animal on the floor. Uh-huh. Do I just go back downstairs if nothing's happened yet? Um, check around the corners. Oh, Jesus. There's something special that a lot of people miss. And you don't get a flashlight in this, right? Nope. And you never will. <laughs> a lot of people have asked for that. They're like, can you please put a flashlight in this game? I'm like, nope. That nope. was part of the plan all along, that you don't get a light source, because it provides you a sense of comfort to know that you have something you can control and that there's no dark corner that you can't, like, light up and look right. at. And it could, it, it could add an element of just scary, but this I feel like is even scarier. Yeah. Because you just can't see shit. Did you check all the corners? I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> there's a really dark... Oh my god, it sounded like someone was walking up on me. There's a vent. Ugh. Why is the audio crackling? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that the game shouldn't be crackling. <laughs> I mean it's working for you, whatever it's whatever it's doing. <sighs> Have you looked back at the dog? <gasps> oh my god! Ew. That was actually something some friends of mine played this game and they're like, Whoa, what if I thought the dog was guts? What if you made it so the dog like turned into guts? I'm like, that's actually a really cool idea. But that's most cool people idea. most people miss it. And you're a one man band, right? You're doing all this yourself. Every single thing, yep. Wow. Music, sound effects. The the footfalls are actually, I recorded those by setting my mic near my computer chair and like stomping on it. <laughs> sounds are incredibly impressive. Oh my Thank god. You. Actually, it's funny. When I was trying to figure out how to record those sounds, I was looking around my room. I was sitting in this chair looking around going, I need some kind of rubber surface to record these sounds. And I couldn't figure anything out. The next morning, my wife was awake, and, and she's like, well, why don't you just use your computer chair? And I was sitting in it, so oh. I didn't even consider that for an option. I'm like, that's brilliant. So it's kind of like a fun house that I'm in, right? Where are you at right now? So I went back down the stairs. And then I'm, I went uh, through a door... And then I just passed like a, or I just went over like a bridge. Okay. And I see an exit sign again, but that's down below. I, I'm going across the bridge and now I'm in just like a really dark room. Kind of like a castle looking area? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Oh, and I just hit uh, a gate. I am hit a dead end and I'm scared to turn around. Oh, I think you may have... Uh turned around and gone back to the the beginning it actually oh, really? closes off the the area that you start in closes off and a lot of people get turned around and then they just think it's a dead end but they don't realize they just went back to the beginning and we're locked wow. out yeah because this all kind of looks the same after a while if if you but. can get back to the area where the the door frame looked burnt um there's another okay. place floor i am i'm looking right at it it's, it's really easy to get lost in this game, and a lot of people haven't uh, beaten it because of that. I actually wasn't going to release this publicly, which I'm glad I did, because Markiplier played it. Yeah, absolutely. The official demo was just taking too long, and I updated Unreal Engine and had some issues with the project. Um, like, the, it would just freeze for like 30 seconds at a time, and was just killing my workflow, and so I'm having to start over in a lot of ways. Like, I'm using all the assets that I already made, but I have to totally rebuild this level. Um, so right. I'm like, in the meantime, I'll just release the alpha demo and let people play it anyway. So. And then it's gonna go full demo by the end of this year, you said? That's what I'm aiming for, yeah. And it'll actually have two levels and a lot more story. Um, I'm looking at some bloody footprints right now. There you go. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many ways I can go. 
Uh, is that a shadow or is something looking at me? No, I think that's one of the, the, the things. You know what's unfortunate is this probably would have been a lot of fun in real life. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You, like, just one of these, like, fun houses? Yeah, this. Oh, oh, okay. Are you going to follow the footprints? I guess. Should I? Oh, shit, you're not. I just heard something in my room. <laughs> You know what's funny is I thought for a little while that my room was haunted because I would hear voices sometimes when I was doing... Oh, stop. When I was doing uh, Let's Plays and mm -hmm. I figured out who it was. Oh, it's feet! <gasps> oh, man. That never gets old. How do you I'm feel? I'm sweating. Oh my god. You can't see my nose. Can you <laughs> run from it? Uh, have you not been running this whole time? <laughs> I guess not. Shift for sprint. Oh, okay. I'm not trying to run. I mean, I'm not trying to like... Well, you're, you're <laughs> gonna have to at times. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was really good. Oh, the sprint makes it even scarier. Matt, I'm sweating. Uh, yeah, it's funny. The uh, Originally, the footprints were going to be for, for another creature that I wanted to put in the game. And I decided not to, but um, I was just kind of messing around to see what I what I could do about putting bloody footprints in the map. And so that was me exper experimenting with decals, which are like what make you add like splatters and things to the wall. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to take them out and I had my buddy like test play the game and he saw the bloody foot footprints and freaked. He was like, oh, there's why are there footprints? And then every person that played it made a comment about the footprints. And I thought, you know what? I need to leave those in there and I need to figure out a way to uh, to keep them in there without it being, you know, for some other creature. So I decided, what if they led to a pair of severed feet? As if someone was in there stamping footprints. <laughs> I know See, I told no. you, Silent Hill warped my, my 12 year old mind. Here's the next question though. When I run, where on earth do I go? So, uh, where the feet were, you don't have to actually follow the footprints. Most people do, uh, but that is the area that you need to go. I mean, there's a few ways to, to get to the exit, um, but the most direct way is through the, the green and purple area. I hear him, I hear him. I don't know where he's at, but I hear him. Shit, I'm, I don't know where I am. Ah! <laughs> oh, there's the feet. Oh, I did it. Hang on. Oh, shit. Hang on. Oh my God. He's so gonna get me. Oh my god, I keep getting caught on edges. He runs like a little bitch. <laughs> ah oh my god, I get so turned. I'm just, I'm in a corner. I don't know where I am. The music hasn't stopped, but I'm gonna die. You can outrun. Oh, no, shit! <laughs> <laughs> I can't even look at him. Pardon my friend. I thought you weren't afraid of clowns. Do you know what it looks like from the the, gl the glimpse that I've yep. gotten of him? It looks like Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new like... one. I was talking to my wife one time and saying, you know, we're being listened to constantly, and my phone goes, I didn't quite catch that. <gasps> I'm like, shut up. I like, see, he just proved my point. Now. <laughs> Stop spying on me. Okay, I keep hearing that giggle, but I don't explore further. You, you get an early peek at the clown if you uh, stop when you hear the giggle. But you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh damn, my I, god, I did have I'm worried I'm not going to be able to do this. I, I know you can. Whenever Jesus. I'm on stream with somebody... And they're trying to play it. They always beat it. Yeah, did you 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 help for sure. So, can you play this without getting scared? Yeah, I can now. It was really really hard at first when I was That's hilarious. Uh, 
actually, I remember when I like finalized the um, like AI for the the clown. Um, I had it was late at night. My wife was already in bed, and I was I was working on it. And I had to give myself like a pep talk and go, okay, because you know up until that point. Oh shit! Yeah. There he is. Oh my god. Oh wait. Okay, you had to give yourself a pep talk. <laughs> Did he get you? Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so when I was, um, when I kind of finished how he, he would, like, w wander around, um, I'm like, okay, now I'm not going to know where he is, because I set up, like, spawn points for him, and the first time I went to test it, I sat in front of my computer, and I was like, okay, let's do this, you can handle it, you made this, and it was so scary, um, and that's that's the goal. If I can scare myself with my own game, then I'm doing something right. Because I'm pretty numb uh, to scary yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, now now where I'm at, I'm even numb to to this level. But you know, I've got like six other creatures that are, that are going to make it into this game, and no some way. of them I'm not looking forward to. Oh god. Oh god. You'll, uh, well, I'll explain about that later. But the thing that I was going to say earlier, I remember the funniest um, de depiction I heard about the clown was the old woman who sells feet. The old woman who what? Sells feet. They, they thought that the clown was like an old woman, and then you see the severed feet. So they're saying she sells feet. Jesus. So the, 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 the feet are the way I need to go, though. You don't have to actually go over to the feet, but there's somewhere in that room that you're looking for. You can actually find it without uh, getting caught by him. <laughs> really? So I yeah. should go left instead of right? Maybe you should. Because I'm wondering, there's no, like, stealth in this at all, I'm assuming. No. Nope. No, once he's after you, he doesn't stop, and he knows where you are at all times. That's another thing that I wanted to do differently. A lot of horror games, um, you know, have a hiding mechanic or an insanity meter, and you, you like, you have to go find a cabinet to climb into. And I'm like, I want to make something that's just relentless. Once he's after you, you just got to get away from him. If you get far enough away from him, he'll despawn and the music will die down and you'll be fine. But um, yeah, you can't hide. Okay. One of my favorite games of all time and horror games in general is Outlast. Mm. And that one at first, like, I, I honestly couldn't play. Really? Like, I was too scared, and now I can speedrun it. Oh, I got out! I got out! I got out! I'm looking at red again. <gasps> there you go. Okay, well, now what? And I'll give you a hint. Uh, red will lead you to the way out. It's really easy to get lost in this game, and there's probably 40 to 50% of the map that you still haven't even seen. Wow. Mark Markiplier uh, went the same route that you're going, and there's like a whole underground area. Um, there are holes in the floor in, in a certain place that you can fall through. But I don't want to torture you uh, for too long. <laughs> I think it's a little too... <gasps> Fuck me! Ah! Oh, shit. You gotta run! You gotta run! I can't even look at him for two seconds! <sighs> did, did you find him in the red area? Yeah! Yeah, okay. That's that's a good sign. He was coming at me, though! <laughs> oh my god, I haven't had something scare me like this in such a long time. Good. This is, this is the, the best part for me. I, I don't know what it is, but I have this like almost sadistic love for scaring people. You, I'm not that kind yeah. of person about anything else, but for terrifying people, I love it. I just gotta remember now where I went in that purple area. <laughs> Maybe I don't know if I went the right way. I love how you can't see this, but you know exactly where I am. Well, you made oh, yeah. it so duh. But once have you, you had anyone speedrun this yet? What's that? Have you had anyone oh. speedrun this yet? Um, I had someone claim that they were speed running it, but it took them almost a half hour. And you can actually beat it in like maybe six minutes if you know where to go. 
I'd love to be able to speed run this. The the guy that did it was so dedicated to this game. No one else. He spent five hours trying to beat it before he finally beat it. And then in his video, he did a quote unquote speed run. Uh, but the route that he took, you know, went all over the place. And it, he, he knew where to go, but there's a way more straightforward way to get to the end. How do you feel then about people speed running video games? Um, I mean, I have games that I like to speed run. Um, more, more retro games. Uh, I think it's great. And, and that's yeah. actually something I, I thought about um, when I was designing this game is I wanted to make it in a way that like, you know, your first experience with it um, is going to take you a while. Um, I'm hoping the, the full game someone could put in 10 hours, you know. Um, I mean, someone put five hours into this level alone. Uh, when I finish it, it's going to be a lot more linear. This ended up being a little too maze-like for most people and... I didn't realize that was such a like thing that people hate. They're like, oh, it's another maze game. And I'm like, I thought, you know, if you create a cool atmosphere and make someone get lost in it, that it'd, you know, be scary. But a lot of people just get frustrated and go, yeah, I don't know where to go and then give up. So um, it's going to be a lot more linear, but hopefully the full experience is around 10 hours or so. Um, but I want it to be something that if you know where to go, you could go and beat it in like under an hour, you know? Yeah. Because like the uh, you know the original, the original Silent Hill, actually that one is pretty long. Silent Hill Two, I got pretty good at. No, I would say the the game that I've speed run the best would probably be the original Resident Evil. Um, I I love. Um, let's see, I think my best time was like an hour and nineteen minutes, which I know isn't. That's far from like the the record, but um, that's still pretty dang quick. Um, what I w did is I beat it twice and unlocked the um, Colt Python with infinite ammo and the rocket launcher with infinite ammo and then just you you blast through it. <laughs> have you have you played the original Resident Evil? I haven't. Do you believe it or not, oh, my man. first Resident Evil game was seven. Oh wow. Yeah. Insulting Very late to the this. game. <laughs> I know. Well I didn't I didn't really I mean oh shit. As much as I love horror games, I really didn't start playing any until like college and I graduated in college like I graduated college like two years ago so mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here by the way I haven't moved I don't I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous I'm also I'm stalling <laughs> um but yeah I I couldn't really play Outlast and then finally beat it and then yeah I've, I've played Resident Evil 7 just as it launched like February like a month after it launched and then um been trying to play four, but that's about it. Like I really haven't, hmm. I haven't dived into the. Uh, I haven't even played the the second one yet. I haven't gotten around to that one. I will though. I the want remake. To. Yeah. Uh, at some point, you got to go back and play the originals. There's something about the you know Resident Evil One for PS One. Um, it's definitely aged, and if you're not like into that aesthetic, like that you know it might not be as special to you, but. Um, you know, that's where it all started. The whole survival yeah, yeah. horror trend grew from that game, and Silent Hill just amplified it, I feel. How you doing? I, just, I haven't moved. <laughs> where are you at? So, okay, I left the purple area, and then there was two ways, right? You could go uh -huh. to the kind of dark hallway, or you could go to the more lit hallway. So I went to the lit hallway, and this is where I went last time, and this is where you scared me. But now, I'm about to turn a corner, and it looks like there's two different ways I could go. I'll just tell you, if you encountered him in the red hallways, that's what you're looking for. And if you find him again, and he doesn't kill you, you will beat it. So I just need to run past him? Well, you can run away from him. A lot of people don't realize this. When you get to that point in the game, you get trapped in that area. I mean, I feel like that. I, I, I feel that already. That so you so you either have to find your way out or die. It's it's you find your way out or you die. But if you get him to spawn uh, and you keep running, you'll find it. At least I, I believe in you. I know you can do it. 
<laughs> if you see him, just turn around and go the other direction and get away from him. So don't run past him. No. I mean, you can juke him out. But that's not where I need to be going. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Okay, hang on. Go, 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 go! You got it, you got it, you got it. Do it. Oh my god, the noises he's making. Dude, I don't like it! Okay. I gotta say, my mouse sensitivity is not being very nice to me. Oh my god, the fucking noises this guy is making. I hate it. I hate it. Ah! I'm in a corner! Fuck! Shit! Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> You're like, You're just- <laughs> Okay, he didn't kill me, he didn't kill me, he didn't kill me. Oh, he got me so good. I'm in a corner. Oh, shit! Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Keep going. <laughs> Matt! I do get really turned around in this. I can't see a damn thing. You'll know I when you're Oh my there. god, I need a heart meter. I'm surprised my Apple Watch is not like, uh, bitch, are you okay? <laughs> oh! New area, new area. I feel like speedrunning this would be damn near impossible. Oh, it's easy. Really? If you see a teal colored room... Yeah, I've, I've lost it though. Oh, you needed that. You're actually looping around if you keep going. So you'll find your way back there. Is there a, a stamina thing? Because I feel like I'm running out of breath. Yes. Yep. There is? Yep. Oh, fuck you, Matt. You're <laughs> the worst! <laughs> Let me ask you this. Again. Should I be going down? If you see green again, it's it's a T-shaped hallway. Yeah. So just pause for a second, look around, and you'll see the exit. Pause. But don't but don't run pause. past it. Should I be going up or down? Uh, either way, you'll get there. It's a oh, big okay. loop. I think I, oh, I found it! I found it! I found it! Oh no, I missed it again. Go back. Gonna, Oh god, I got it, got it. Oh my god, I did it. Hang there you on. Go. <sighs> Congratulations. Nemesis. Oh, this music is awesome. Thank you. Do I need to remember these numbers for any reason? <laughs> Depends on how much you want to dig into it. Well, how was your experience? really good. This was really good. It, it looked Thank awesome, you. and I think the best thing about it, honestly, was the sound. Like, the sound creeped me out so bad. It, everything sounded so realistic. Come with me and be a part of this dark world. Witness its full creation from behind the curtain. That's me. That's oh, awesome. Friends. It was awesome. Thank you. I mean, like, I, I get nervous, and I play a lot of horror games, but this... It's very rare that I take off the headphones. I'm so scared. <laughs> Good. I don't, I don't know what Markiplier said, but I'm assuming he said the same. Yeah, he liked it. He said he liked it a lot. Um, he didn't talk a whole lot. He uh, he seemed to really like it, and he loved at least the intro of it as well, um, which is really yeah. cool to hear. It's interesting, though, that you're creating a video game that revolves around a very popular fear that you don't have. So right. what... Is that easier for you then to create a video game that, I mean, it's ultimately scaring you, like you said, like you did have to brace yourself to play, but what is that like playing a video game that wouldn't really appeal to you or would it? Uh, well, I wouldn't say it doesn't appeal to me. Um, in high school, um, I remember reading it, the book, 
and loving it. I thought it was fantastic, but it was more than just clowns. Like, you know, Pennywise had all these different forms that he would take and just mm -hmm. thought it was absolutely brilliant. And his descriptions of monsters, Stephen King, uh, are just so well done. And you, you can just see this whole scene that he creates. And um, I'm sure that was a big inspiration for me too. Um, but I, I always love a challenge. I mean, making right. a game by myself is such a huge challenge, but another part to that was like, okay, how can I take something? Actually, here was my thought process. Even though I'm not scared of clowns, there are people who are terrified by clowns, mm -hmm. even like mm -hmm. cute little happy clowns. So I thought, okay, if I make this game right, there are going to people be people who can't play it at all. They're like, won't even be able to touch it. Right. Um, right. So, yeah, my, my goal was to scare people who aren't even afraid of clowns. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Got that, me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just, I think the way my brain works, um, I just understand, uh, I don't know, I just think I have a unique understanding of horror and, and what yeah. really gets under people's skin. Um and, you know, of course, my influence is, you know, like the original Silent Hill. I've learned a lot from just, like, reading, inter listening to interviews and seeing, like, how they did a lot of stuff. Like, the guy that did the music for the original Silent Hill actually recorded a dentist drill that he mixed into the music to make people uncomfortable. Um, so, as you saw, huh. that dog creature, which is the one that yeah. I'm really not looking forward to and is actually from a nightmare I had as a kid where I was chased by a dog. Uh, I started working on the background music for it and it's a lot of this like teeth chattery sounds and I just layered tons of clacking oh. teeth. So I'm trying to find things that um, just are unsettling to listen to and then right. blending them in with the ambiance. Um, and I feel like sound is so important. It's so important to um, a horror movie, a horror game. If you don't do the sound right, you can totally flop the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've been doing music production for a long time. So that was something I was really able to tap into. That definitely makes sense. Yeah, because this, this sounded awesome. Like it, just, it sounded so realistic. <sighs> yeah, and I'm... I'm to a fault, I am such a perfectionist. So mm -hmm. I will take one little detail and focus on it until it's, I think it's absolutely perfect. Um, right. Although I, I go, okay, this is perfect enough, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, the sound is something that I really poured a lot of effort into just to make sure I did it right. Yeah, this is, you could tell, dude. I mean, and it's also, I mean, the Unreal Engine looks great and I'm very familiar with it, but for some reason this just felt like a new unreal engine like it cool. a, a, an updated one like it just looks so good cool and i didn't even yeah, really I'm, get a good glimpse of the creature <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i'm uh <laughs> yeah everything that i i do i'm always trying to find a new way um to do things uh especially with the graphics um like most people don't notice it but there's like a cd that's sitting on um on the like TV stand, um, and I've I've never seen that in a game. I've never seen someone make it a CD. And if you like go up to it, you see like the color rings moving around it. Um, so those like little details that a lot of people don't bother with because they're like, we need to make right, a game. Right. So they just get the game out. I go and focus on those tiny little details because while most people won't notice them, it's it's like your peripheral. Collectively, they add to the the immersion of the, the the full experience you know the horror genre because i feel like that's what i play most truthfully it's 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 always my it's my go-to and i i i like getting scared i guess yeah even though oh me too it's I'm the best pouring pouring sweat super nervous i haven't stopped shaking since i stopped playing but it just it brings out this like level of intensity that you don't you don't get in all games you know it's like a it's like a your adrenaline is just like <laughs> I, I love that too because um, you know for me like I'm I'm a bit of a horror junkie but most things don't scare me anymore so I, I love when I find something new that just uh, have you played any puppet combo games no oh you need to um, he's he's super into that too so 
uh, most of his games have kind of like that PS1 aesthetic. Right. Um, yeah. So it looks like you're playing like on an old CRT display TV. And um, he has, I haven't played it yet, but he has a game called The Riverside Incident, which is like a found footage style game. Nice. Um, but he made the scariest game I've ever played, which is called Nun Massacre. N U N? Nun? Yes. Yes, as in a nun. And the first I'm gonna write time that I. I hope no one finds it. <laughs> I, I first saw uh, Markiplier play that game, and I'm like, what is this? And and you know he he's doing that. Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know. You know. And he's just running. And I'm like, what is this game? And so I went and bought it and uh, played it with my cousin. And I remember the first time I I tried to play it. Um, I played maybe 15 minutes and I had to turn it off. I'm like, I can't do this. It's I so can't. scary. After a while, I kind of got used to it, and then you know now I can play it. Well, the beginning of this started very, like, I mean, it was like a VHS tape. Uh-huh. Yeah, with the, the, the auxiliary thing at the Are top. Are you going to play more into Like, what, do you have, like, a timeline? And, like, I mean, I'm assuming, as someone who's written things as well, you, even though you'd never see the character, you have a character and you have all these personality traits about him, even though we don't know anything. But for you, as the writer, you've got all these things, so, like... Are you really gonna what like what time period is this and what are you gonna play on for the the the, the game that's coming out? Uh, yeah, so I I have so much written out. I always have <laughs> stacks of notepads everywhere. The the composition notebooks, I, they're nice. everywhere and they're filled with sketches and and writings and like I have an entire timeline planned out, um, way more than anyone would realize. Uh, yeah, about the character, the creatures, symbolism, um, the different environments. I mean, there's right now the plan is to have seven, seven different levels that you go through, and each one has a different creature in it. Because I feel like a lot of games now, they all just have one creature that pursues you the whole game, and mm -hmm. um, I just want something that has a lot of variety to it. Um, bet between the environments, like they're going to be some pretty similar environments, but they're going to change pretty drastically at points too. My, my problem is um, I've always been overambitious, which is why um, it took me till 31 to actually get to a point where I'm like, I have a big project I'm going to finish. Um, you know, doing my first game jam was the first time I finished a game. And I've been doing this since I was like 12. Um, uh... So... So something about just like setting a deadline and going, I have seven days to make a game and I'm mm -hmm. going to do it, period. Um, right. And just holding yeah. myself to that uh, was huge for me and it just showed me that I could do it and just the reception the game got. I'm like, okay, people are loving this little game I made in seven days. So what? how will people respond to something I spend, you know, a couple years on? Um, my, my timeline is uh, ideally if I can get to a point where I can do this full time, um, mm -hmm. I would like to think in within a couple years or so, uh, I could make the full game. Um, but you know, that just kind of depends on, you know, how much support I get on Patreon. And if I do a Kickstarter, um, cause right now I'm working a full-time job, which takes up a lot of extra time. Um, but yeah, got big plans. How long did it take you to make this again? I would say around six months or so. Wow. I was expecting a lot longer, to be honest. Uh, I, I mean, I just like I said, I, I just kind of obsess over like the the little details and stuff. And so when I'm um, when I'm just in that headspace and I've got the the story and the wheels turning, uh, you know, right. I'll I'll spend all my free time just focusing on the, on the game um oh and that's the other thing i was gonna say you're saying like wow why seven creatures um so i've always been totally over ambitious and i've really had their their game projects i've had to admit to myself like this is too big you're not gonna finish this <laughs> and um even this game I like i i tried to refine and then it still grew and got bigger and bigger so when i sit down i'm like if i want to make a full game um I've got too many ideas to just make one creature and I'm always drawing weird creepy stuff and so I've got just yeah I mean you saw a few of them at the end but 
there, there's a few other ones you probably haven't seen yet. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Puppet Combo's game, Nun Massacre, he actually gives you instructions at the beginning and he says, only play this once a day. <laughs> I think part of that is like, you know, so you can like get in that mode and just have the experience and then like walk away from it. But I'm sure there's also the thought like, you know, don't don't freak don't yourself do out too much. <laughs> and that's why I put that warning in there. I know some people have read it and think it sounds cheesy, but um, I was reading an article that was talking about the future of VR and how it says uh, we're not far out from our first video game death. <laughs> You know, when, when VR really takes off, um, they're like, I'm, I'm positive that, that people are going to die at some point from something just being too immersive and too terrifying. And I actually do have plans to do VR for this game. Yeah. Oh. But but I, like, my, my worst nightmare would be finding out someone died playing my game. Like, I would right. actually be crushed. Yeah, it's heavy. I mean, it's heavy as a consumer and a, a developer. Because it's it's a lot. Like this is people, you know. These, these are these are. People I just want people to have fun. Thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's man. that's the whole point for me. You know, like uh, if you're not having fun, then I'm not doing it right. You know, and I I I find terrifying horror games to be endlessly fun. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I do. This is fun. This is, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did great. Oh, uh, my God. It's cool you were able to beat it without me actually seeing where you were myself. But I know the environment pretty intimately, so I had a pretty good guess. Well, I will say you definitely helped me in that the green and purple room. If you hadn't given me the subtle hint that, yeah, maybe you should go left, I would probably still be in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's, like I said, there's a whole other area. Um few different areas that you didn't even see um which there's there's quite a few videos of people playing this game at this point you can see it all um but it it gets pretty disorienting and a lot of people have just been like i don't know where i am i can't play this and then they give up so i was like i'll i'll save you from that and i'll just kind of lead you roughly in the direction you need to go and then let you figure it out from there i want to try and speed run this you should. Um, yeah, like I said, I can beat it in like under six minutes, even from starting in the apartment. Six minutes? I'll write that down. Yeah. The only thing I can speed run is uh, is Outlast, the first game. Yeah, and I don't even I don't even speed run it that well. I think my record was like under an hour, which is like number seventy five on the leaderboard. But it's like I'm playing on console, which is a little bit more limiting than playing it on PC. But I'm honestly just playing it as fast as I possibly can. Can Like, I'm not glitching through anything. I'm not doing the 100%. I'm not doing any percent. I'm just playing it as fast as I can because I know exactly where to go. And that's like a six-hour game. Wow. But I love I've that. actually I never love beaten that one. Really? I had a buddy. Yeah, I had a buddy who was like, dude, you have to play Outlast. It's so good. And um, I don't know. I couldn't get into it. I, another thing about me is I'm really picky with games. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, like I have way more fun, honestly, playing like Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis. Oh, okay. That's like the era I grew up playing those games. Uh, remember my dad and I went to Walmart when I was like six and we walked out with a Sega Genesis in one arm and a Super Nintendo in the other. And it was like the greatest day of my life. Um, your dad? so what's that? Your dad? Yeah, my dad. Um, dad. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, seriously. And so... <laughs> Like, for where I'm at now, I'm so busy that I don't have the time that I wish I did to play more games. Absolutely. Um, because if I'm going to make any real progress, I have to focus on my, my projects. A lot of great oh, games yeah. I'd love to play, but I'm just super picky. And it has to really, really, like, grab me. So I didn't right. get that from Outlast. I watched Markiplier play through Outlast 2, and I thought mm -hmm. it was awesome and some of the best graphics I've ever seen. Th something I didn't like about it is that you could go, like the, the different like monsters or, or henchmen like had stations. So you could just like, if you left their area, they would just leave you alone. And I'm like, well, 
I studied music theory for two years. Like I went to college for to study music. And my second year, I was like, I hate this. I'm learning things about music I never wanted to learn. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I need to stop. And so I dropped out um, and I learned some really valuable things, but um, you know, I decided, okay, that's not the, the direction I want to go. I took right. what I learned and ran with it and used it for something else. So um, as long as it's something that you love to do and you can balance that work and play, you should be fine. Um, you know, for me, I've been, you know, doing this for so long and there are times in my life where I've thought, well, maybe I want to do this, you know, maybe I want to be in a, a band and tour the world and get signed and all that. That was actually something I really wanted to do at one point. And I was right. like, okay, that's not in the cards for me. And no matter what stage of my life, the one thing that has always been there is game design, game development. Um, you know, whether it's stupid little 2D games or more recently, you know, fully 3D stuff, it's always been there and I finally just was like you know what I'm just gonna embrace that and pursue it nice you're killing it you're absolutely killing it thank you this is awesome thank you I appreciate that there's there's plenty more to explore that that first area that you start out in where you wake up and then you go through that little like red zigzag area and it takes you to the second exit sign when you walk under the second exit sign it splits left and right and you've gone right every time so if you go left, there's a whole another section that you can explore. Okay. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for being a part of this. I am of course. probably going to play it again to explore, ex- explore, explore that other area. Um, whew, where can people find you online? Tell us about your Patreon. Tell us what's going on. Yes, uh, patreon.com slash Matt Reeves. Um, that's where you can support me directly, make this game happen. Uh, you know, if I can do this full time, we can get this game cranked out and in your hands and terrifying you in no time. Uh, I also recommend diapers. Uh, ah! As for so uh, other social media, um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Nemesis Horror, and that's Nemesis, not Nemesis. A lot of people think it's Nemesis. Nemesis, which is the plural, so that means. <laughs> Two or more nemesises. So nemesis. Nemesis. Yeah. And all my information will be down below. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have a podcast, Play More Games. It is available on all podcast platforms, but if you just want to click that link below, it'll be down there. I'm typically better at endings, but I'm still, you guys, I'm still shaking. I also have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash patchesplaysgames where you can see exclusive Let's Plays. I am currently editing my playthrough of What Remains of Edith Finch, and then I just started Soma, and I'm really enjoying that as well. So again, click the link down below, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. (laughs) Peace.